Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Rich Reviews and today you join us at Goodwood and big announcement, we're buying an Amira for the channel. Today's video is sponsored by Rich Reviews. Rich Reviews now provides services to support our viewers in purchasing their own dream supercar. Our services currently include pre-purchase inspection, support calls and collection video to document you collecting your own dream supercar. More information in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. So we're here at the Lotus Amira stand at Goodwood. Yeah, We've ordered our Amira. The order for the Amira went in for a first edition car, so some time back. Obviously there's been some delays and there'll probably be some more delays forthcoming. We've got a deposit in, and next stage is to actually configure the car. We'll take you through every stage of the configuration so you'll gain an appreciation of exactly how our car is going to be configured. We'll be using the Amira pretty much as the daily driver. So we'll have a 458 to keep bringing you that supercar experience and we'll have the Amira for mainly daily driving. So we'll be able to bring you content from inception of a first edition Amira car all the way through that learning experience and that driving experience from early, very early doors. But tonight I'm letting it go Spend my coin for sure I'm gonna be myself Or I could be someone else No one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I just wanna feel alive Unfortunately, during our recording at the Festival of Speed, we had an issue with one of the microphones. This caused a corruption with some of the audio. This being the case, I'll be performing some voiceover audio for certain sections of this video. Here we have the Lamborghini Huracan Technica. Now the Lamborghini Huracan Technica was designed as a cross between the Huracan Evo and the STO. The Technica was designed to provide a fun to drive Huracan while still providing the performance characteristics of the STO model. It achieves this by utilising improved aerodynamics in the form of a new rear wing and a more aggressive front bumper. The Technica implements the same V10 power plant and DCT as always in the Hurricane, pushing out 640 brake horsepower with a 0-62 mph in 3.2 seconds and a top speed of 202 mph. So we're in the Cartier enclosure and we're just going to talk you around a few of the cars that are here. Here we have Nick Mason's F1 GTR, very bespoke livery, you cannot miss this GTR. The F1 and the Mura is pretty much my favourite supercars in, on the planet. So here we have a McLaren GTR Longtail, it's another racing car, another racing edition of the F1. Wow. This is perceivably Roan Atkins F1. This, this has been crashed a couple of times, I believe it was near a million pounds on the first repair. It's a hell of an insurance claim. 
So there's various other different types of the F of the McLaren F1 here. We're just going to go through and pick up some of them very, very quickly. It's got the F1 high downforce. Moving to the right, we've got the Exper Experimental XP4. And as we move further down the enclosure, we'll pick up some of the other cars that are here. There's all various different types of old types of cars. I'm not quite sure what they are, but they all, they all look uh, fantastic. They all come from their own different eras. As coming along here, we've got an Enzo, Ferrari Enzo. Just going to talk to you a bit about the aerodynamics of this car. When it's driving at velocity forwards, the air will come forward here. There's a radiator on each side of the of the front of the car, of the front spoil of the front splitter of the car. The air will come forward into this section, exit at the top of the bonnet or the top of the wing section and come down the side of the car. Also, also exit through the side of the wheel arch area and come in and provide cooling into the rear, into the engine, into the engine compartment. And also the arrow from the top of the bonnet section will come over into the back and into the, into the rear end to cool the rear suspension and rear brakes. But a LaFerrari, this, we believe this is Nick Mason's LaFerrari as well. So if this is Nick Mason's car, it must be Blue Potsy. We've seen this car a few times at uh, Dick Lovett's. He has its service there. And then moving along here, we've got one of the first supercars, Ferrari supercars, the 288 GTO. Stunning car. This is very much a Marmite car. People either love it or they hate it. I think the, st the styling is stunning. Very reminiscent of the 308, which of course it took its styling from. Moving along to the side of the, of the 288 GTO, we've got a 206 Dino. So this is actually a 206 Dino, it's not a Ferrari, as you know, and people who know their Ferraris and their Dinos, this is the first V6. This is the first V6 vehicle that um, Enzo decided to put a V6 into a car. Um, and it's a mid-engine V6, and he named it after his son, Dino. So it's created a whole new brand. It's not the Ferrari, it's not a Ferrari brand, it's not under the Ferrari brand, it's actually a Dino. Later on, some of the downstream Dinos were then moved into the Ferrari brand. So if you ever see a 206 or a 246 GT or a 246 of any variant with a Ferrari badge on it, then it's actually where the dealers have put a Ferrari badge on to try and assist in sales because they didn't sell very well because they were a Dino, they weren't classed as a Ferrari. We've got an F50 here. I mean, look at that cool number plate, F50. Christ, that's probably worth as much as the car. Now that's my preferable car with regards to the 40 and the 50 and the Enzo, but my son prefers the 40. And just to the side here, we have a Ferrari F40. So this is standard colouring, Rosso Corsa, left hooker of course, manual. So we're at Goodwood Paddock here. As you can see, this is a connected range of cars here that are going up, the, up along the track. To our left, we have an Audi R8 race car. And to the right, we have a Jaguar Group C Le Mans car. In the bag, I'm going to show you. Um, I actually have uh, a Lotus keyring that I've bought. Now this keyring hopefully will tide me over until the Amira arrives. Here a Porsche 962 Group C Le Mans car is being pushed through the paddock. And this heralds back to the times when cigarette companies used to be able to sponsor sports events. Here you can see the Rothmans livery on this, on this 962 Group C car. Moving along again within the, within the paddock, we've got a couple of more F1 GTRs. I think we've counted around eight F1s here today. Incredible when you think about how much the, the market value is of those cars. Notwithstanding the GTRs, we managed to get invited into the race car paddock and we're stood here next to Lorena's F1 racing car. It's the V12, so it goes back or holds back to some of the golden periods of F1 driving. It used to be driven by Michael Schumacher, so it's got a lot of strong heritage behind it. So here in the actual F1 enclosure, so to the left of us, you, we can see the McLaren F1 team and all their, stupid, all their F1 cars. So on the right hand side here, we have Nigel Mansell's F1 car. Look at the actuators in top, pretty impressive. It's obviously when he was driving for Williams. This section on this side is all the Williams F1 racing team. To our left, we've got yet another F1 GTR. Obviously here in the Gulf livery. <laughs> to the left, we've got Lewis Hamilton's McLaren. What an astonishing setup of cars here. I'm gonna be 
myself, I'm gonna be someone else, I'm gonna be myself, I'm gonna be someone else, I'm gonna skip my break, I'm gonna make mistakes, I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes, I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes, I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes, try not to hold me down, feel alive. So we're here at the Goodwood start line for the track and we're just going to pick up the sum of the cars as we go forward. So we've got GT2 RS MR. To our right we have a Ferrari Roma, to our left a BMW M3 and here we have two green Aston Martin DBXs. Here also is a crazy electric um, van that has been seen going up the hill quite a few times. Here we have Travis Pastrana. This is a motocross rider, rally driver, and X Games champion and co-founder of the Nitrous Circus just going past. This is the McMurtry, the 1000 brake horsepower electric van, which now holds the new Goodwood Hill Climb record thanks to Max Chilton. Preparing to attack the hill, we have a Porsche 911 992 GT3 Cup car, another Jaguar Group C Le Mans car in front of the Porsche, an open top Ferrari 333 SP V12 car, and a Porsche 992 RSR Piero category Le Mans car. We initially had a GoPro fitted here to Lorena's F1 race car, but unfortunately the adjudicators told us to remove it because it was unsafe, because it wasn't tethered in two places for health and safety reasons. But what we did manage to capture was Lorena driving from the paddocks up along to the start line where we captured some of that phenomenal V12 sound. the start line and we're picking up on a few of the cars here just before we walk back to to the paddock we've got one of the new gt4 rs's here the uk new gt4 rs what an astonishing piece of kit as you can see here as i move around this is where you've got the sound of the induction inside the car because you've got the the induction right in the cabin of the car and the way how it's transferred through from both sides into the into the into the plenums of the engine 
And behind the GT4, we've got an Avaya, a Lotus Avaya. You don't see many of these around. Obviously plugged in, been electric. Always love the rear lighting, the way how the rear lighting encapsulates the aero. And the rear diffuser, that's what you call the rear diffuser, brake light center on the, on the rear diffuser. Being electric, this Avaya has 2,000 brake horsepower. Here at the Koenigsegg stand, we can see the CCX in vibrant orange. This car is very low mileage and it was converted by Koenigsegg themselves from the automatic gearbox it was originally fitted to, to the much preferred and sought after manual transmission. In crayon here, we have the Koenigsegg Jamira. This is a very highly anticipated four-seater hypercar. And would you believe it, this car has eight cup holders. And then coming up along here, we're coming to Tim Burton's actual Zenvo, his hypercar. So this is Tim Burton's, if you're not sure who that is, that's Shmi 150. I'm not going to do it justice when I say it's mauve, but it's got the green accents, and green calipers. Substantial amount of carbon fiber, as you'd expect, very highly spec. Moving along here, we have the MC20 Spider. It's painted in like a chameleon paint. It shifts as the light hits different angles on the paintwork and then on the, on the bodywork. It's almost like a metallic uh, chameleon paint. Next to the MC20 Spider, we have its counterpart, the Coupe, painted a very nice launch spec, flat blue. Here we have the McLaren Speedtail colored in this beautiful paintwork, Volcano Red or Volcano Orange, which transitions from orange to black towards from the front to the back of the car. This is the car we saw previously at Goodwood Breakfast Club earlier in the year, three seater over 240 miles per hour, and it's the first car that McLaren have made to exceed the F1 speeds. And next to the McLaren Speedtail, we have the McLaren P1 painted in this beautiful flat yellow. This is McLaren's addition to the holy trinity of the early 2010s. <laughs> the Gordon Murray T50. Very impressive. As we were talking about the MC20 with its, with its doors, imagine trying to get that in your garage. We've got two hopes there, I think. Bob Hope and no hope. Here we've got the Mercedes AMG one. This is the car that was quite a bit of disappointment to the people who put their deposits down. It's been a long time in the making. It's not delivering on the performance that it was going to. Skipping some of these other cars on the left hand side and moving along here, we've got the McLaren P1 GTR. Now this is the track version of the McLaren P1. Look at the styling on this car, look at the aero, very menacing design with the slats on the fenders and look at the, look at the A-pillar door mirrors, very cool car and also painted in this beautiful deep orange colour. And here we have a trio of Bugattis, we've got the Bugatti Veyron Supersport, the Bugatti Veyron Convertible and the Bugatti Chiron Supersport. Just look at the menacing front styling of this car. And here we have the Hurricane STO. This is painted in a very vibrant white. I really like the contrast between the white and the black here. And next to the STO we have a Hurricane Evo and this is painted in like a almost similar to the to the Amira colour, the Heffel Yellow. Very nice flat yellow. And so we come to the Ferrari section. As the names across on top of the doors, as they say, suggest, this is the FXX range. If people who are unknown about that, the people who purchase these cars don't really actually physically get to keep the car. They have a track only car and Ferrari provide the car to a track of your designation and they provide all the support and maintenance for the car during your track session. And then they take it back again. <laughs> This is the SP38. Move along here to the SF90 Spider. This is in a triple layer colour. This is very much like Giallo Triple O Strato. In fact, it is Giallo Triple O Strato. Very nice, very nice combination. Very nice mix of carbon fibre, black, and the, the triple layer yellow. It's the 296 GTB. Again, with the Furiani pack, Furiano pack. As we come along here, we come to the 812 Competizione. Very limited numbers vehicle. Very limited numbers car. Again, Jello Triple O Strato, Triple Layer Yellow. Moving further down, we've got the Monza SP2. There's also an SP1, which is a single seater. This is the SP2, which is a twin seater. 
And moving along, we come to the Daytona SP3. Again, the latest derivative from Ferrari. It almost looks like it's in Rosso Scuderia or Rosso Mugello, or it could be actually Fu Fuoco. It's hard to know with uh, the light being quite dark and it being in the shade. Being honest, I'm not particularly sold on this styling of this car. Not that I'd be uh, in the in the making to buy one. Pagani section, and we've got the Pagani Huayra. Look at this, this has got the full opening, so it's all we've got all doors and the rear engine compartment open to show full access. Again, another matte colouring. I'm, I'm not sold on matte colouring at all. This has got a full matte light blue paint job. Imagine the nightmare it would be to do a colour change on that, change the, all the dash interior as well. And this is the Huayra R. The big difference between this and the, and the standard Huayra is this is actually a naturally aspirated V12. I think a lot of the main manufacturers are looking to get the last of the naturally aspirated out the door as, as best as possible in as much of a big bang as they can before they're forced to go electric. So we've just come over to the other section. We've come to another hidden enclosure. So this is the McLaren Senna GTR. And as we come across to the back, we've got a McLaren P1 Spider. This is one of the major cars that was showcased today. This is one of the major cars that was showcased this year at Goodwood. Thankfully, not in matte silver, it's gloss. So that's just about it for Goodwood for 2022. We're going to close it out now. If you like the video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Plenty of great content to come. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next video.